What's up, Jack? What's up, Ian? Sorry, man. I'm just swallowing some of my cereal right now. <laughs> Catch you at lunchtime or breakfast? Shit. It doesn't breakfast. even matter anymore. It's Blur's Day. What time is it anyway? Yeah, my whole schedule's thrown off and shit, dude. <laughs> I've, been, I've been able to sleep. My mind's been like just going like crazy. So I, I know, know, I've been sleeping way too much. <laughs> yeah, and then like when I come up with an idea, you know, like a, maybe a funny idea for TikTok or something, I'll literally wake up in the middle of the night. Hold up one sec. I'll literally wake up in the middle of the night. The best times. Write it down and then go back to sleep. <laughs> That's the way to do it. I've been like just writing down my dreams because, I mean, you get ideas from dreams and all that. And it's like, yeah. what does that even mean? But I had like a horror story of a dream last night, and I was like, "What, what does this mean?" It's like what a happened? video game, but I was like a, a bad guy killing people. <laughs> weird. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. Well, I wasn't the bad guy. I was just like it was like a video game, where, like you're watching third person, and I'm seeing this guy like taking people out in this horror haunted mansion with like a bat, and then I, and then I'm watching this other guy with like a knife stabbing people in the back. <laughs> and, like, yeah, okay, this is damn. Like, maybe bat. um. Normally, it'd be better to have a dream when you're like have an idea, like you do. <laughs> But you never yeah, know when ideas pop up. It could be because there's a lot of people, you know, walking around now with, you know, face masks and bandanas and shit. So that might be in your subconscious, you know, seeing all these people with, with, with bandanas. So not to get me. <laughs> Where usually the normal attire of, you know, of, of people going to rob a bank is now like normal attire out, out in the open. So it's like, you know, kind of changing the way people think. Yeah, yeah, it's always interesting when you decipher a dream. You're like, I mean, there's some meaning behind it. Obviously, it's like a message for your personal self and like trying to read into it. But sometimes it's just like, it doesn't make sense. If all dreams are weird, if you have a normal dream, that that's that's really weird. <laughs> if it's like, I just woke up and I had a normal. I dream. know. I don't. I don't think I was dreaming. Yeah, I am dreaming now. I don't know. <laughs> Another way to good way to start the conversation. I love this, man. How have you been? Yeah, right. How have you been? Uh, I know you've been staying busy online. At least I'm still. Yeah, to put out I've been. All, I've been all right. I've been, you know, primarily focusing on, uh, you know, the comedy, comedy videos on TikTok and yeah. stuff like that. Um, just kind of, you know, biting my time with those kind of things until this quarantine's over and people start booking parties. Then I'm gonna go at it super hard again. I'm doing like maybe you know small virtual shows once in a while, but I, I decided like to, to take another route until this quarantine's over, just to try something new with this, you know, this comedy. Yeah. And it was actually, believe it or not, it was in, inspired by the Magic Crasher. Magic kind Crasher, of, um, yeah. Yeah, kind awesome. of, yeah. Kind of not only inspiring me, but also pushing me and like saying, hey, you know, you should totally um, bring that Scooter character back because I was doing that funny character for a while. Yeah. And um, just decided to really go hard at it on on TikTok with that character, and it's been uh, it's been really fun. You know, I've been having fun with it. No, I've been seeing you, and I know uh, we talked to David about a week ago, and he was it's kind of yeah. a good way to have you here as well because he's super proud of you and seeing where you've taken that character, your oh, scooter cool. character, your comedy character, and now it's blowing up, and now you just you're free with it. It's that's another good thing. Uh, people getting the magic. It's it's much better if you do have a character because it's harder to be yourself. So if you have a character, you can be free. Like I see you, like you can do whatever the hell you want. You know, you're not yeah. you're Ian, but you're like you're also the scooter who can do this wacky stuff. And it also helps you come up with your ideas because that's what maybe scooter would do, not you. And scooter could do this or this or that. And I found out that in the very beginning when I got into magic, and now I'm kind of coming back to it, finding my character more. Yeah, because I, I I joined the magician group by dressing up as the Joker. And I'd be like, it'd be cool to get in character. And that, yeah, that that's, character is that awesome cool. free. And so you could be that character. So I think always having a character creates the show too. No, yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, I'm still going to be magic Ian in, 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 in a lot of the shows. That's not, that's course, never going to change. You know, I'm never just going to be just Scooter on stage, you know, probably. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a little different. <laughs> I know more, I'm speaking more. So I only know Scooter, from online so i'm not even sure i don't even see it. if you bring it out one time uh, i brought it up to the jams like when it was still at that very first denny's like did you <laughs> we're, yeah we're talking like six years ago oh wow so it's, that's been around for a while then i didn't know that yeah I, i've had the character for like 10 years but um it was on the back burner for a long time and that's probably when i first met you i know me and ian met here 
Yeah, at Orange County <laughs> Jams, probably the one in Tustin and Denny's. Yeah, you know, six years ago. Yeah, like, I think so. Yeah, it's probably been about years, probably about that long. Ago. Yeah, I know as well. Honestly, that's because six years ago or seven years ago is when I basically ended up taking magic seriously and as a career. But yeah, yeah, it's it went by way too fast. <laughs> that's good. And you've been doing yeah. it for a long time. So tell us a little about uh, your story. Let's start from the beginning. <clears throat> yeah, so I've been doing magic for about 10 years. I saw Lance Burton show in Vegas, you know, and as a kid, I'd li as like this 13-year-old kid seeing, seeing, you know, Lance Burton levitate in like this, I think it's like a Ferrari or something like that, or a Corvette across the stage. As a 13-year-old kid, you're like, I want to be able to do that shit too, you know, so that kind of sparked my interest. And then I just started to uh, mess around with it. You know, started off with this, some card magic. Magic galore and more in Westminster. Um, Ken became my mentor. Uh, also, um, Shudagawa was a mentor when I was up in Hollywood, uh, uh, learning some stuff from him. And uh, a third, in a third-party way, Amos Levkovich, the uh, very well-known dove magician, shoot was consulting with him because I wanted to learn how to do dove magic. Who was so. the dove guy? Amos Levkovich. Amos Levkovich. She's got one of the best dove acts ever, on the level of Shannon Pollock, but more in a in, in a truly slightly more modern era. Um, and uh, he passed away about uh, he, he was, seven years. He was years one of the ago. older guys too, right? I think I know. Yeah, he was very old. Yeah, he passed away from cancer, but he was uh, kind of kind of the the guy who third party, you know, kind of kind of taught me through shoot because shoot had to consult with him and stuff like that. Yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah, I was learning from Ken Sands mostly for a while uh, and uh, started off kind of like with mentalism before moving off into into magic. So it's kind of weird, you know, most magicians, I was kind of like Banachek, right? Where um, I, I, I learned mentalism and then learned magic. Whereas usually, for most people, it's the other way around. Most people will right. learn magic and then kind of, you know, kind of get into, into mentalism. So I kind of took that opposite route, kind of like how, how Banachek did and... Um, no, it was really fun. And then I started uh, working at the magic shop in Disneyland. Uh, oh, cool. We started oh, off. You worked there too. Nice. Yeah, we started off in the cart for about a year. Uh, and then the magic shop inside Disneyland was no longer getting magic products. Their distribution got all fucked up for some reason. So basically what we did was um, the managers in Disneyland liked what we were doing at the cart in downtown Disney. So they decided to bring us in and, and the Disneyland magic shop became a third party company houdini's whereas you know before that even when it opened from you know like i think it was 55 it opened or something like that uh, up until up until um uh eight years ago it was always the disneyland magic shop but then it became a third party known as houdini's uh, so i started working there for a while and then um uh, I got enough people walking in there every day saying, did you know Steve Martin used to work here? <laughs> every single fucking day, 10 times a day. So eventually that got to me. And then eventually it kind of got to the point where it was like, no, really? Tell me about it. No. Uh, but uh, eventually. But what I a great left. opportunity to work at a magic shop. You know, that's where you really get your chops down too. And you get to deal yeah. with those type of questions that you're normally no, going to hear all the time as a magician. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, where, where do you learn this? Oh, so you, you have those lines ready to shoot. You know, and even yeah, probably definitely. dealing with the guy that says, oh, it's Steve Burton. You know, you, you get over it and you just let them talk and make them, you actually give them that power by making them feel special for that moment. Because you already know, you've heard it for a thousand times. Yeah, uh, yeah, my dexterity definitely got a lot better, you know, working there, especially with cards. So before I worked there, as opposed to after I worked, I worked there, um, my dexterity with cards definitely got a lot better improved. And uh, after that, uh, I decided to kind of go all out on shows. So, so when was that? What what turning point was that when you decided to leave the magic shop, or were you at the magic shop and like I want to make it a career? When did you make it a career? I made my career when my manager found a weed lollipop in my pocket and found it and said, "You can't have this at Disneyland." Really? Then that became that. Then that became my career. That's awesome. I love to hear that. <laughs> Where I'm glad it. I'm glad that actually happened because um, if that so didn't how, happen, how old, how old were you? I was. Uh, how old was I? I? I was about twenty. Yeah, I was about uh, about twenty, um, maybe nineteen. Or yeah, yeah. I, I think I was about twenty when that happened. <laughs> so it was kind of it was kind of like a bittersweet moment. But if that did not happen, uh, I, I I would have not had you know the the career of a magician that I've had so far. 
you know, if I was still working at the magic shop in Disneyland, uh, I would have not, not have taken this to the next level. You know, I guess you could say uh, this, this, this would have ne never come to fruition uh, the way that it, ha that the way that it, it currently has before the quarantine and hopefully after again, it'll, it'll really come together. But, um, but yeah, man. Uh, and then I started creating my website, got on a bunch of th uh, third party, um, you know, websites, got a, got onto entertainment directories, started collecting client reviews. Once I really started getting my shows together, uh, was doing uh, a lot of outreach uh, to different schools and stuff like that, because schools are also another one of my favorite places to perform because it's a big audience. And you know me, I'm more of like a stage magician. I feel more comfortable on stage. Um, I, I also love close up magic, but you know, I love being able to, to, to be up on stage as I'm sure, um, a lot of people can relate in front of a few hundred people, you know, and they're, and they're, and they're, they're cheering and stuff like that. And <clears throat> it almost makes you feel like a rock star. Like you're this rock star on stage, but you're a fucking magician. You're a nerdy ass magician, but, but you feel like you're a rock star. Like, it's true. You know, <clears throat> I feel like a rock star. Like queen or something. <clears throat> but, yeah. uh, that's Without one reason that I really band, love the, just, you're the just one guy and, and a few good props. Yeah. Yeah, but don't get me wrong. I love. I mean, I love close up magic too, and um, you know, I've I've had a passion for close up magic and mentalism as well. So yeah, so it looks like you're a good variety artist. You got the close up, the mentalism, the stage. What else don't you do? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and uh, so, really, in the beginning, the first thing, you know, you had that like uh, epiphany moment. Oh man, you know, my boss found this in my backpack, kind of told me this and that, and you're like, you know, I'm gonna take life into to my hands and my career <laughs> yeah. and I want to do this and you basically showed yourself and everyone else that you could do it. And the first thing you did was to make a website and then start sharing and connecting with people online and that was like, so I guess, how long have you been doing this now? You're now, you're, you're 20 years old when you first started? Yeah, so I've been, I've been really, really going hard, hard, hard at it for, you know, um, the past four and a half years but um, at that time, you know, it was about eight years ago when this happened. A little over eight years ago, so I was forced into it at that point. But it wasn't until the last four and a half years when I was uh, uh, when I was like super going hard at you know hustling and really getting those leads coming in because I was making us a, a couple of slight adjustments in the marketing and advertising and work trying to work smarter and not yeah. harder. Um, so what, what I was, were some you know, like the challenges in the beginning that you were able to overcome? as far as making it the career and the, the business? Like with the business side of it, um, uh, it would definitely probably be uh, just not having good enough promo material yet. You know, because the, the, the most, the number one important thing is not the sleight of hand. It's not, it's the performance obviously connecting, but in the business side of it. But it's how the people it's, feel. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's how the people feel, but the number one important thing is obviously connecting with your audience. But I forgot where I was going with that. Right, right. I forgot what the number one important uh, thing was so that I was, I was just talking say. about like um, the challenges going through. So you figure that you've got to connect with them. That's the most important. And then, uh, you know, show yeah, who you really uh, are. It's about how the, you make them feel and- The number one important thing time. I remember now, it's social yeah. proof. It's social, social proof. Social proof. Yeah. yeah so because even, I know, yeah, go, having an online presence is basically nowadays, especially for entertainers, it's your repertoire, it's your uh, resume. <laughs> so that's how they look. So for me, it was uh, re redoing all of my, my pro material, getting better pictures, better pictures to put up on those entertainment directories, better pictures to put up on your website, make you look like you're a million bucks, you know, make, make you look like you're more famous than you are. Uh, you know, make, make you look like you're more well known than you are. Um, so there's a, a bunch of different things that I kind of did to be able to get to the point where people looked at me as different than just an average magician. Um, and uh, by redoing my videos, getting multiple videos uh, that are were actually meant to kind of attack each, each, each kind of market that I was trying to achieve. So I had a video specifically for corporate events, trying to get corporate events. I had a couple videos specifically for school events. So that I had like an artificial intelligent type 
advertising program where it would know whether or not that person was going to be interested in my school shows, which would directly take them to my school show landing page with my specific video talking about school shows. Oh. Corporate event people, it would know exactly if they were interested in booking me for their corporate event, whatever, and it would take them directly to my landing page, which would talk about my corporate event show and my corporate event video specifically. So, but then I, I always had also, I've always had the general homepage, you know, which just has me doing um, kind of a culmination of different things, put together mash, a little mashup, um, making me look larger than life and shit like that. Um, but yeah, that's the most important thing. And then just, you know, having a, having a decent website design as well um, has, has been really uh, a, re a really good thing for me getting to the next level because it, you know, if you have a website that's not good, people will look at it. You can be the best magician in the world, but if your website doesn't meet up to it, people won't know and they'll click right off it. Yeah, yeah. And they'll go to the next website that looks better. Okay, um, I got to reel them in right away. I hope you guys are gaining all this information right now. This is great. No, I love it. Just to really put out the work and make sure you have an online presence. And that's the one of the first thing, and as I introduced you, I said, when you look up magician in the LA area, you're one of the first ones to pop up, man. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. So you're up there. And I've talked to plenty of others like, yeah, magician Ian, magician Ian. He's up there. So that's good. It shows that you put in the work and you know how it works. And it's just trial and error. But just looking good, you know, feeling good, make sure they look good too. Like, like you're saying, make sure the audience is having a good time when you're filming them. Uh, Cause I think that's a big part that sells what we're doing, especially as a uh, interactive entertainers. You're yes. With people. And that, that's also the difference uh, between selling your show as a stage show or a parlor show compared to doing close to magic. There's a little difference. Well, how do I know what to, you know, how do I pitch my sit, my, my close-up show or my stage show like why not try to do both i think people will right. look at themselves and they say i just want to do this i just want to do close-up and then they eventually want to do stage or they just do stage and close-up i've heard that more and more so often lately but uh i guess the question is yeah how would you do you pitch your shows usually together as doing close-up together with the stage show or is it you have one particularly for stage and when, I mean, you kind of answered it before. You had people that look for corporate shows. They go to your page online, linked up. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big listener, you know what I mean? So I'll, I'll listen and ask as many questions as I can first before making any recommendations, you know. So I'll just ask the client, you know, I'll just ask him, I'll ask him questions about the event. I'll just ask him, you know, how many people uh, are, are you going to are gonna be there? And um, what does the structure of your event look like so far? Um, and then based on those answers, uh, and sometimes, you know, based on the conversation, I'll, I'll ask a certain thing that will help me get more, whatever questions you can ask to help you get more information about how the event is going to be, you know, will be the deciding factor in what I do as, as a magician for the performance. So most of the time, you know, in, in a, a corporate event where they have a lot of awards going on, and um, they're doing a lot of intermittent things. Sometimes the show doesn't fit that well. So, you know, I'll tell them the strolling magic option. Um, if, if they, and I'll even ask, I'll even be as bold to ask the question, um, do you plan on the entertainment being the center of, of attention? Do you plan on, on the entertainment being the, uh, the main draw for people? And if the answer to those is yes, then I'll always pick, I'll pretty much always pitch the show. So um, if it doesn't seem like they're going to have a ton, ton, ton of time, uh, then I'll pitch the, you know, 30 minute show. If it really seems like, you know, the, the entertainment, the, the magic show is going to be the main reason why people are coming, it definitely will be the full hour show more than likely. So I'll, I'll pitch the full hour show. I'll, I'll kind of tell them what I do. I'll give them different options, but then I'll also ask, you know, will you guys have a lighting set up? Will you guys have a lighting system and lighting truffle system set up? It's because that way I can do the special effects light show with holograms and levitating woman in the air. And then am I able to control? And I'm not throwing them at 
like literally light speed like i'm telling you i'm just kind of explaining the questions that i would ask them yeah no, and then that, and that that totally answered our question too which is yeah give them questions so then you know what to give them so that you know what cause you know what you do already and you should know what you do especially pitching yourself uh, for your business angles and is another big thing to go over. Have, you know definitely make sure you have a show for a certain time some people just want 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes to 45 to an hour you know it exceeds maybe tops of three hours sometimes but then you got to realize what what the party is like so you, you answered it right really assess the, the situation you know know where you're getting into how many people if it is going to be like the number one highlight like you said is great to make that the hour-long show then you know if it's going to be like more of a cocktail party and people mingling then walk around and be a better you know, option. Yeah. Uh, because even for me, I, of course, I offer both. And I usually people don't know. And I'll give out my two different services. But then I'll always give them a lot of questions, too. So I know I'm like, okay, well, then this is going to be the one that's going to work for your party. And yeah, no, that's, that's a great, great. I'm definitely happy with the answers on that. So a lot of questions. That's it. That's all you got to do. Yeah, yeah. Be a, be a huge listener. Lots of questions. Because and people also- want to talk about themselves. People... People, first of all, like the, 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 one of the major things in sales, people love to hear their names. So if you can, without being too obvious about it, the more you say someone's name, it sounds better. It sounds good to them. The sentence sounds good to them. Name is the sweetest sound. And then be like a huge listener, right? So like when, when they're explaining to, to you about their event, if they, if they want to talk on a tangent, let them go on. Let them go on. What that means is the more sentences they say, the hotter the lead gets. It's burning in my hands and it's about to close and I'm about to get that cash. So that's yeah, what man. it means to me, you know, because they're excited about it. And then they're, the reason that they're talking to you about it is because they're excited to have you aboard with it. So if they want to talk about it, you know, keep going on about it. I don't interrupt them. I just let them talk and talk and talk. And I, you know, I just, you know, let them do, let them do their thing. And then when they're ready to let me talk, then I, then I start talking uh, back with them and it closes really quick that way. I notice. Yeah, yeah, let them be. That's one of the greatest gifts because they're excited in that moment. So yeah, let the fire burn. <laughs> and then it just gets you into it and you're hooked. Exactly. No, that's perfect, man. I love that. So I hope you guys are learning a lot. This is great for business, which is it's perfect. You know, we haven't dived too much into the business part of magic and talking more about all sorts of stuff in the past couple of weeks. And what are the good business questions? I know we had a couple other kind of or anything or anything else even 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 if it's not business, uh, you know any yeah. any kind of, any kind of question you have for me, it's all. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions too, that are watching, put them down below. Uh, you know, I had a, another question about what's your favorite platform, like social media. Right now, it's definitely TikTok. TikTok, yeah. It, TikTok has the biggest potential right now to grow because of how the algorithm is. Uh, Instagram, it's a lot harder to to grow now than it than it used to be because they don't have, from what I've heard, like from a lot of sources, they, well, they don't have a lot of the original people who who um, you know took over it. I mean, before it was acquired by Facebook, they don't have a, a lot of the original people who who were working there before now anymore. There was up until like a year and a half, two years ago. So they they've changed a lot of the, their their um, their algorithm with being able to, you know, gain followers. But TikTok is is like it has the most advanced algorithm. And the cool thing about that platform is you can have you know almost no following, and you can get like hundreds of thousands of views on your first post if it's good enough. You know, so it's mm-hmm. like or even millions if it's good enough. Um, yeah, that's one avenue I haven't taken, but. During this time, I'm like, okay, maybe it's that time to get on. <laughs> and David yeah. got hooked too. Last time I talked to him a week ago, and he mentioned you, and a lot of people. He's like, why not? I'm like, yeah, why not? It's really it's fun, dude. It's it's not only is it fun, but then you know, uh, once you get to a certain following level, you can start to get, you know, make a small amount of money off it. And that's that's not why that's not why I do it because it's not enough to, to make it worth it for me. It's just it's just fun to do in the times where it kind of keeps you out of that depressed state of mind it's yeah, fun it keeps, yeah it keeps you busy it keeps you connected to with another audience which are building more of that as well so it's it's a win-win honestly you know like, i don't see it as a bad thing i know there's a lot of you know people that may talk bad about it because they just honestly probably never tried it <laughs> or they just don't get it and whatever or they're insecure about themselves on yeah, social yeah. Media. yeah and anyone 
bashing anyone is showing their insecurities anyway. <laughs> so exactly. it doesn't really matter. So I'm glad to see you doing it and kicking ass and being free to do whatever you want without, because I'm sure you get a little bit of this and that from everybody, but you're always doing you and you're always going forward with everything. And that's super admirable. And Thanks. you've been killing it, man. I mean, I, I'm proud of your work. I look up to you, especially in the business side of it, because that's one thing I know I, I'm working on. Like, with Slightly Smoking, it's cool we have this business we're bringing back. And it helps me really want to focus more on my own personal. You have business. merch, right? You have merch now with Slightly Smoking? You've yeah, had it for have, a while, we have, right? We have a, we're doing a whole b bunch of new stuff. So we have a whole bunch of new merch, and we're trying all new new avenues. And just since we have all this time to work, it's... It's been great yeah. to, you know, put some more positivity and connect like, like this. That's why I love doing this because we get to learn from one another, share some wisdom. And, you know, I know we have a lot of followers on here that are, are beginners and they don't know where to start. So at the same time when I was there, I, I had no idea. So it's, I'm just great to be right. there and to, you know, be the stepping stone. And this once this quarantine's over, it's going to be easier because my phone's been dead for five weeks. I had one call for someone. They they wanted me to do a virtual show, but yeah. I mean, but I mean, I was going from four, you know, three four phone calls a day, three four high quality lead form submissions, you know, which aren't third party, and, and then a bunch of third party stuff as well. I went, you know, from that uh, to the last five weeks, pretty much zero, you know, because of because of the shit that's going on. So, um, you know. Uh, I can do one of two things. I can keep going with TikTok and try to make it big on TikTok, or I can try to go to the virtual show route, which I might do. Um, I'm still trying to decide. I'm kind of late in the game on that. Um, one thing I, 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 yeah, well, one thing I may do is I may take a, a, a video and make it into a 90 second promo video for virtual shows. I know uh, one of my friends, Johnny, has done that. You know, Johnny, he was on the live. I don't think he's still on. I don't know if he's still on here right now. I don't think he is, but. Uh, what I might do is do like a 90 second promo video, reshape my website, virtual magic show, talking about that, and then do a 90 second promo reel saying, you know, hey, here's tickets, and then create like a link for people to get tickets to the virtual show. Um, and, uh, you know, cre create a promo video to try to get those uh, in. But um, if this goes away in a month, it might not be worth uh, changing that that business uh, right, right right now completely. Um, we'll know more on May fifteenth. Let's just put it that way. We'll know more on May fifteenth, and then from there, uh, you know, it, I'll kind of decide whether or not I want to take the route of changing my entire website up. Um, you know, because we only got two and a half weeks or three weeks until we get the answer uh, on May fifteenth on what's going down. Yeah, I, I think even then it would be still another month, really, to even if, if before, it goes before well. people yeah. book parties again, probably. And it, yeah, it's a different time. So, what do you predict after this? I, I've been asking everybody. You kind of answered a little bit, but what, what's your best envision? It sounds like you have a lot more hope after we're back to normal. Yeah, get back into doing it. You know, get get back into doing it. The shows, because it's been it's been uh, a month now. My last show or gig that I did was on the twenty third of March, I think. Was the was it twenty third of March, or maybe or maybe it was the week before that? But it's been about over a month now, you know, since I've done a show, which is like yeah. unprecedented for me. But obviously, during the times, what can you do? Yeah. So, how are you doing right now? What have you been doing to keep busy? I know you're doing TikTok. You're doing Instagram. Pretty much just TikTok right now. TikTok that's, most that's, of that's good. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm having fun with it, messing around with it. I'll go live on TikTok too, and uh, I I also have been doing like a little bit of just messing around, having fun doing like freestyle rap over a beat, and oh. uh, uh, like funny, doing funny ones, but also like serious ones and stuff too. Uh, so I'm getting to explore and share your passion. Yeah, I'm thinking about actually learning how to create music. Yeah, why so, I, so I can put my own like music up on TikTok because that's the platform. Like, if anyone like does music too, like that's the platform to put it up, put your music up on, and that's how you can get big with your songs. Uh, cool. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are seeing huge success from putting their music up on TikTok. But yeah, that that's kind of like seems to be the answer right now for me is that platform. TikTok, yeah, check it out, guys. And you're uh, Magic Ian as well. And TikTok, magic yeah, Magicians Tour. Tour. If you guys can handle the um, inappropriate comedy, 
that that I that I do, then definitely follow me. If you're gonna get offended, then then um, won't be the best idea for you to follow me. Now check him out. <laughs> what you're seeing right now is is Ian, and then you're gonna yeah. go to Magician's Tour on TikTok, and it's gonna be a whole other side of Ian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scooter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you do. You do the magic too, so it's you got. Yeah, my magic. last post I put up was yeah. I still do you know magic posts once in a while. So you can see yeah. some magic, and then you also see some absurdity. <laughs> yeah, major absurdity. But no, it's funny, man. It's hilarious. Thank you, bro. Yeah, let's see. I had another. Okay, yeah. So he says, "Which one you like more?" This guy asked, "What do you enjoy more, close-up or stage?" Seems like you were saying stage earlier, but I guess what is your yeah, favorite? yeah. Well, I I enjoy um you know doing stage shows more for that um energy that you get back from the audience. Um, but I have a huge obviously I have a huge respect for close up magic too. But if I had to choose one, it'd probably have to be stage magic and illusions. It's just a lot harder. It's a lot harder to you know set up obviously. You know, close up. Most close up shows you can set up in under twenty minutes. You know, under fifteen minutes even. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stage acts like my 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 full stage show with the light, special effects light show and everything like that. It takes just under ninety minutes to set it up. It takes like seventy five, eighty minutes. You know, to set to set that up. Um, and then get into costume, getting into costume and loading the doves like with the full. You know the the full shit going on with the the hologram suit and shit. Okay, yeah, that awesome. yeah that that making just sure that. Works, you got to do some rehearsal for sure, making sure it all works right. Yeah, and just that takes fifteen minutes to put on, and then load the doves with that. Yeah. So. <laughs> a lot of work. And then yeah, I'm so all. Each keep one has their pros enough. and cons, but they're both really great. Yeah. yeah. That's tough. To, that's a tough question. <laughs> When I'm old, though, probably when I'm sixty, I'll just be doing close up. I won't. won't when I'm sixty, I probably won't be wanting to want to carry around like super right. heavy material. That's kind of what I, I I'm going towards as well. It's like I'm looking to do more stand up material, and also just because of the time we're going through right now, it's so kind of going back into more parlor work because people may be a little more hands off <laughs> and not yeah. want to touch the props. So why not? more parlor or more, more type of stage and the setup isn't nearly as hard with parlor which is nice most of the time yeah and just pack light carry big i mean you could you could project a close-up effect too people are now seeing that i mean look at shin lim he is doing close-up magic but he's doing it for millions of people that's true because he has a projector and he's doing it on tv but i know a lot of close up most people don't have projectors stage. And as long as you have, yeah, if you have like a crew with you that could film that, then you could really sell that as a great, you know, performance for everyone to see. Um, so now yeah, you are seeing that transformation of close up on stage. So there's no like real wall in between. Now it's like, if you want to do close up and stage, you can do both. If you want to do stage, you got to stay on stage. And if you want to do close up, you got to go down right. close up. Uh, so I think if you're starting close up, don't worry. I know we have a lot of close up magicians here. And just try to always project your close-up magic one way or another. You can make it big. I mean, I, I what was it? A uh, Lepenzig did the Torna restored cigarette paper in a huge auditorium of thousands of people. <laughs> so he made he made that play big. Oh and wow! It was, and it was just having those many rips. He does that thing that display where you see the pieces kind of stick to his fingers. Ah. Uh, puts them together. And with with no it up, so it blows up in the air, so you kind of see it's like one again. He, he did it with no um with no projector screen, or he did have a projector. Screen? No, this is like in the probably forties, you know. So, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. You just as long as there was someone there, I think what helps that too when you have someone on stage, so people can experience what that person is seeing on stage. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so use your audience well. Because if it is something so small, I mean, I think Leppin's, like, he just did it. I'm not sure if he brought someone on stage. I think he just did it like that. But that's just a micro effect. Like, that's just an example, though. He, he must have just had such great stage presence and able to project himself so well that he could perform for a thousand people. Yeah, and they could definitely, you're right about, they could definitely um, 
play off the reaction of the person on stage. Banachek actually talks about that a lot. If you guys know who Banachek is, yeah, he's Banachek. talked a lot about yeah, like uh, um, if if he's on radio and he's doing a fork bend, the you know the radio host is actually describing what's happening, and the right. people at home are painting a picture in their own head of what it looks like, which sometimes can be more magical. Imagining what someone is actually ex experiencing for real. Yeah. That's why that works on stage. No, that's good. I know a lot of people are also wondering what what sort of magic can I be doing for, you know, virtual magic shows or even like you said the radio because a lot of people still doing radio that's real big, and that's having to do with a lot more magic that maybe like mentalism or, uh, you know, mental. Yeah, you, and you can do a lot of normal card routines too. You know, and if 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 you want someone to choose a card, you know, you just look. You can look away instead of having someone. Pick one, look away, you know, do this, and then look away and then do your peek, you know, and so uh, obviously you can't have someone choose a car, but if you're going to do it virtually, you know, obviously I, I would have my lighting set up all, all nice if we were to actually do it, but you know, that, just that, you know, you don't even have to have someone, you know, choose, obviously because you can't choose one. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's called stop. Look through, look through. Yeah. You know, and that's even something I remember went right before my last show was right when the... It was you know, cracking down, you know. So I, I was doing a lot of like, just call stop rather than take a card because some people were like, eh, I don't know. Oh, around that time. It yeah, was right. It, it was like last, yeah, last week before they shut it down. You can like, really do this most this stuff virtually. Stuff. You can really do most most effects that you would do for normal audience virtually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, there's a lot of visual magic nowadays, especially. I mean, card magic, coin magic, coin magic especially. Is highly visual so that's one big thing for virtual shows yeah i've been doing my tick like when i do tiktok live sometimes i'll do out of this world i'll even do out of this world believe it or not you what know is which it? is the i'll do out of this world that effect you know where they separate the red and black cards yeah, yeah. and how i'll do it is i'll, I'll hold a card and i'll and, and i'll be like hey guys i want you to type in the comments if it's a, if you think it's a black card i'll go ahead and put it in the black pile if it's a red card, I'll put it in the red pile. If you think it's if you think it's a black card, type B in the comments. If you think it's a red card, type R. And I'll keep have everything in full view, and it, and then the first one's R, boom, you know. And then real quickly, I'll do the next one, and then someone will type like a B, and it'll go in the black pile. And that's how I've been doing, you know, those kind of things. So you, you just you know you can get, just get real creative with it, you know, with 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 yeah. with the virtual stuff, and don't yeah, don't and don't. don't black is another great one. People, are, are, I've seen a lot of yeah. That's yeah. Um, that's that's. But yeah, my I like I like to use the oil in the water. Like that's a great routine you could do, like this. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So like, it's just, just like, just do it. You know, just don't like, don't don't be held back by. Oh, it's virtual now. It's now now my magic has to be so different. No, it doesn't have to be. You know, just just get just get creative with it and keep everything in full view. You know, like, like you would performing for yeah, really <coughs> normal you can audience. Use your creativity. Like if you're thinking, oh man, I'm stuck, isolated. This is the moment now to really think outside the box, even though you're stuck inside the box. You know, <laughs> so what are you gonna do inside the box? Think outside of it. <laughs> yeah, don't be like Roddy Rich. <laughs> He's the guy who has the um, who made that song. Uh, oh, yeah, stick yeah. in the box. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was like, I didn't get the reference. Do it. But yeah, no. yeah, just like almost anything. You know what I mean? You can do virtually that 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 you can do. In front. It's just a different. It's a different feel. It's a different feel because they're not they're not with you there in person. Some guys say they don't they don't feel a difference. There's a there's a fucking difference, okay? I'm not gonna be in denial about it, like, because yeah. I really think so. I really think so. Um, I really think that there's a there's a a, a huge, a, a, definitely a huge difference in terms of feeling, the the, the feeling of it, uh, uh, because you don't you know you don't have that that same audience reaction that you're gonna have. Yeah, um, it, it has its uh, pros and cons, like everything else, because the pros is like, yeah, you're working in this frame. And you could actually take advantage. This is your stage, and everything outside of that, you could be doing some dirty work, right? 
And I've seen some great magic <laughs> really? through Instagram, people getting away with so many great things. And it's because of that, that factor. And it's just like, I remember Jeremy said one time about the table, like the table is basically having another appendage and you're able to work with it. And the same thing goes for, for the screen. Like this is now kind of an extension of us so we can work with that screen. I could easily, you know, switch off a card if I needed to without doing any sleight of hand or, you know, do a deck switch without even thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't even think about it that way. You can get a lot away with a lot more. Yeah, you can see a lot. I mean, you, if you watch guys that put out a lot of visual magic on online, on, mostly on Instagram, you see, or I'm sure TikTok too, of course. It's you're gonna you're gonna know that there's a lot of things. If you saw that live, it'd be a lot dirtier. You know, <laughs> that floor would be covered with cards, or, or you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't really have many questions coming through here, do we? Let's see. I they they give some in the box. We had one more. Hold on. Oh, she says, "Show us the card trick." Of course, there's always some of that. <laughs> so should I do one then? You want to do one? one? Yeah. I'll do one real quick. Something maybe you're working on, or something fun? Yeah, show us a little virtual card trick since we're talking about it. <laughs> Let me get my pad then and shit, dude, real quick. Do uh, it. <clears throat> we got some minutes to spare. So yeah, I'm, uh, I've been just, uh, there's, there's just one routine I've kind of been, oh shit, I kind of got that glare, huh? Is that a huge glare? It kind of is, huh? It's all right. Maybe point the camera down a little bit. Oh, right, there you go. Okay. So let me get better. Here's a routine I've been working on. See, so yeah, I've been just like, um, a few things I've been practicing too in this, in the quarantine. Ah, uh, you know what? So are you able to see the cars here? I can see it, far? yeah. Do play with some orbits. Right on. Those cards are awesome. Let's see. I'm trying to find, see if I can get this to be better. Maybe I'll try to tilt this a little bit. So, um, yeah, there's like a cool uh, routine, fun routine I've been messing around with recently. Um, it's like a kickback, like a kickback kind of thing. Are you able to see or not? You said five spades? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a card that's going to mean something at the end of this, okay? Okay. This card is going to help me figure out and dictate the end. So I'm going to go through. I just want you to say stop on a card. Stop. Got it? Got it. Think you saw the card? I want you to say that card over and over in your mind. It wasn't an, an ace, right? No. Okay, good, because that would ruin this entire trick if it was. Keep thinking about that card in your mind. Say it over and over. Are you doing that? So we're going to use these cards. I think these aces are going to help me figure out what your card is. So we're going to take these one, two, three, four aces. Were you able to see that? Yeah. The first ace is the black one. The second black ace here, I mean the African-American ace, sorry. We'll take it and set it here. Watch, if I take the red ones and I give them a shake, now I have the black ones here and the red ones actually jump right over here. So if you've got the black ones here and the red ones there, remember from the very beginning, I said that there was going to be a card that was going to help me figure out which card you chose. Remember, this was the one. Oh, okay. wait. Oh, shit. Hold up. See, these are actually the aces. And the entire time, you've been hypnotized. <laughs> that was that was the one in my hand where the aces should have been. Oh, what? So that's kind of a, that's kind of a that's cool good. routine. I've been kind of like playing around with like and that. messing with a couple subtleties and shit. So that's a fun one. Yeah, I love the ricochet where it's like bouncing back and forth. Like, transfer. Like, Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I love those kind of routines because they're, they're so magical for the audience as well. Love, you got here late. Love, Kaimla. <laughs> she just joined, but I think she missed it. Missed the beginning. Yeah, she must have missed the beginning. It's all good. No, that was awesome, man. Thanks, I love man. Yeah, I love this type of text where you have this 
transpo. And I think that's another good uh, good type of trick to be doing, like transpo. I mean, you could put something here as long as yes. it's good. That's the only part. Yeah. I know it's, it's sometimes tough. but you, And that's another thing to really think about. Uh, for people doing any virtual stuff, make sure you have like a good little setup. I mean, this is our stage now, <laughs> so we gotta treat it like a stage and have your little markings of where the cards are. Because I remember when I used to film myself, uh, whenever I would know, especially for a camera that didn't have like a view, and I would have to look through like you know my DSLR, and I'd focus so I knew, and I'd put little markers on the table that I knew that I could work in. But if I was out of it, I was gonna be out of frame. Uh, there are a couple things like just like when you have a stage, you have you have the markers of where to go and stand. It's the same. Thing. Yeah, virtually. Um, the reason the reason why is because when 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 I um when, when I had it right here, um, this is where I have everything I know like where everything is. But the glare because I, I do all my virtual stuff at night and I always go live at night. I never go oh, live. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure you, I'm, I know you have a good light and everything all set up. I know we're just doing the live streams, but I'm just giving them. You know the rundown, so they know if they ever want to try. Sometimes it, it's tough. I've seen I've seen a few guys do the virtual shows. Another guy, who I, hopefully, we'll talk to too. Is uh, he's been doing a lot of the virtual shows. Is Jack uh, Velour? And I, Jack Velour? Yeah, you know, I was. Oh, he's been doing virtual shows. Yeah, I was. I asked him like, "Oh, wow, you're doing a lot." He's doing a lot. Like when it happened, he just really? hooked onto that. So it's it, it's definitely doable. He's one of the first guys I saw doing it and doing well so i mean i think you're aware of him you could probably talk to him about that too uh haven't talked yeah, to him he, about he, it he was staying busy he was staying real busy with it i mean he's doing them a lot i don't know how busy he is wow. still. I, I don't really stay in touch with the guy but i just see him through instagram and he always puts out that material and yeah set a little stage for you know to do it and you are you you do it already because you already do the videos for TikTok and whatnot so you know how it works uh, but for people that are trying out for the first time, you know, definitely get some lighting. I, I actually just, just for these live streams, I got this whole little set up here. And it comes with a light, you know, so it just plugs oh, into okay. the USB. So, but this has been cool just to practice, honestly. I use it just to practice. I'll film myself to practice stuff. I haven't really used it for making videos yet besides the live streams. But for, yeah, doing the live streams even, it's like I want it to have somewhat good lighting and, you know, yeah, doing yeah. it nice. Lighting is super and important. Lighting is terrible, so you got to have good lighting. Yeah, like those, those LED ring lights are I have this one. And, and those are really good ones. Just goes this, this one I found off eBay for like 10 bucks. So you can find these tripod things for your phone if people are looking for them. Like, oh, they're, too, oh, they're so expensive. Because I know the light you have is like, that's a nice one. And those would be a little more pricier, but this yeah, this one, one was like a hundred, I think. So, yeah, they're not they're not too much. But lighting and uh, also, you know, David talks about this audio is very important too when you're doing stuff. Yeah, it is. Especially when you're doing it outside. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you don't have to worry about that. Luckily, we're mostly inside. So. Yeah, when you're doing in well. public stuff. Yeah, I just I yeah. got a mic before you know before this whole quarantine stuff because I, I was gonna do like a lot of prank stuff, you know, like going out and messing with people and shit, which I've done a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. And I got a mic for that, but you know now, now, now it's it's really hard to do it. Yeah, or, or if uh, I see, even if you have family members too, that's someone else you could work with. Uh, if you don't have a spectator, you know, I, even if like for me, it's like my brother. My brother's seen all my magic. He's sick of it. <laughs> but you could take advantage of that, and make it a funny show. Here's another question: What's one of the things you do to prepare yourself for a show? What's your like your ritual like before you go out on stage? Do you have anything that get ready some breathing exercises or whatever it may be running through the script i'll just smoke you know a little bit of meth and <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> a couple shots of tequila and <laughs> oh and then uh, uh pack that meth bowl there's <laughs> let's go i think Show there has on. been times though where um you know if you if you suffer from like in, in all seriousness if you suffer from like anxiety like butterflies and you just can't get over it for the life of you it's actually not a stupid idea to take like a, a, a shot and a half before you go up there because it does like it, it's it, it comes from your adrenaline you know your your anxiety and um like a little bit of alcohol can do you good with that but um, yeah, a little liquid courage doesn't hurt you know if, if you i think do i've only done that maybe once <laughs> yeah I've but no a usually times to be honest i, I don't do it anymore, you have but I, yeah. I do know there's plenty of magicians that 
right? And entertainers that definitely do that that route too. Who do it over the top too, though, and do too much of it, which can which can actually start affecting. There, there's a fine balance between like. Yeah, if you're taking a shot be for your to relax your anxiety and taking like drinking a few beers and then drinking a couple shots and then drinking a mixed drink and going up there fucked up because that's not the point. The whole point is to just chill your because <clears throat> some people do have anxiety more than others. Um, I, I tend I tend to, to, to be one of the people who, who has suffered from anxiety in the past. <clears throat> but um no, I don't want to. I, I mean, I don't want to lead people down the wrong path to do it. Other <laughs> right? I'm like, yeah, guys, okay, you should be drinking. No, no, for the kids that don't. <laughs> you know, there's but, lots um, of golfing methods. But uh, yeah, just kind of making sure, like, you have everything set up. You know, <laughs> making sure you have your act set up. Like, what I do is I, I I'll kind of go 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 over it in my head. So if you show show up to a venue where you know it's like okay. I'm not able to choreograph it exactly to this event. So sometimes I'll show up and I'll just kind of stand in the background and I'll look at the stage and I'll imagine myself up there doing the choreography because every not every stage is 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 created equal. Every uh, uh, every stage, especially if you're not uh, doing the huge stages, every kind of stage is going to have its its own you know kind of uh, issues that you have to deal with, and whether it's angles, uh, uh, wh whether it's um, you know, uh, having a stage that's like a, a stage that's not, it's just a brought in stage, like it's a mobile stage. So it might be a little bit shaky in certain spots. So like w whenever I, whenever I go there, I'll kind of play it over in my head. I'll see myself up on that stage and play, you know, over my, in my head doing the choreography. And then based on that, based on that, uh, it'll help me actually do a better performance a lot of times. Yeah, make sure you know your material, guys. Definitely, just that should be one number one. You know, just run through it, double check it, triple check it, and know it so well that you could do it in your sleep. And then that nervousness in the show wouldn't be so much for the, sh the show you do, but you know, sometimes it's the nervousness being in front of new people, and I get that too. And so, and just being so prepared, you could really push through anything. You know, I mean, and especially if this is what you want to do. I, I know everyone has. Those struggles, even I have struggles too with that, and I, I've just, even though I've done it so many times, uh, staying consistent too is part of it. Like if I take a month off, which I've had, and then I go back into a show, I'm like, oh man, I'm getting those nerves again. That's a lot yeah, more than usual. Yeah, I know what you mean. And that's just because we haven't done it this much. So staying consistent, right. persisting through all of that is how, it's, how it works. And uh, you know, for me, I, I, I do a lot of breathing exercises nowadays, just in general. And I think now I do it before a show, and that helps definitely. And to really, you know, en en envision how the show is going to go, really say like this is going to be like the best show. Really hype yourself up. I think self talk is so important. Self talk. Yeah, yeah, do get like get the energy too. That's another thing. Sometimes you're waiting a half an hour or like whatever, even if it's 15 minutes, and you're waiting, you're sitting down to go on stage or to go up next, whatever, whatever it's, it is, or even if you're actually sitting down i've done like a close-up show and i actually have food with them then i have to walk around new close-up like i'll be eating with them but i still got to get ready i got to put on the energy so I'll, I'll spend at least 15 minutes before i go out whether it's a stage show or a walk around show and i'll just kind of jump up and down like you gotta think like the blood rolling and just breathing definitely gets the blood pumping and i, I just move around a little bit and kind of just be weird and be like nah and just do like some uh, acting exercises and just wiggle it out, and then I'm right. ready to go. Then, because I gotta have that energy. Even when I, as a street performer, I when I don't have the energy, it's really tough. So I gotta really pull it out. And anyone as an entertainer needs to have that energy going out before they go out. Because sometimes you're more relaxed than you're going on stage, and you don't have that. You know, when you first come on a stage, you should have that wild like energy. They should feel that. Yeah, sometimes drinking a little bit of uh, coffee too. Um, coffee, yeah, can can really help you you know, speak in, in a way that, that you feel confident with speaking because half of the battle of, you know, performing is being able to connect with the audience while you're, you know, while you're speaking. So, so, um, and I don't, I don't, I never script any of my shows. I never script anything because I don't want it to seem like I'm, I'm, you know, I've memorized lines and I'm delivering them <clears throat> back like a robot. So I, I never script my shows. 
So I have an idea of what I'm going to say. And then I'll, I'll say it as if I'm ta talking to like I'm talking to you right now. Because I want the audience to feel like to feel like they're special and like it's not just a memorized show like they're at a play like there's a third wall up i want to break through that with them as 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 much as possible and, and connect with them i want it to seem like you know this is the first time i've ever spoken during the show like the first time i've ever spoken in this way during this show you know, I don't want them to think that I've spoken this way five to 500 or 100 audiences already the same way that I'm speaking to them because then it doesn't feel as special in some ways. Yeah, and that's a, that's a total alternative route too because a lot of people say, oh, you got to have a script. But some people I know don't work with a script, like you said, which is good. It's good to know what you do already. I mean, you have a routine. So it's not like you don't have a routine. You have your routine, but you're also now be able to free flow with them a lot more and have that genuine sense so yeah i respect that too oh looks like we're down to a minute and a half i know an hour went by fast yeah it's <laughs> Time it goes by fast now especially nowadays the time is all we got know, uh, right? the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with uh what's the greatest advice you've ever received or advice that you like to pass on to our listeners work smarter and not harder work smart and be yourself be yourself and yeah. don't let anyone talk down to you or say that you can't do it. And awesome. just, yeah. And don't listen to the haters. Listen to criticism, but not cynicism. Yeah, I love that. I love the last one. Criticism, not cynicism. Yes. Stay true to yourself. Excellent words, Ian. Thank you so much for your time here. Yeah, definitely. Talk some wisdom with us on the business, to the art, to the magic. And keep the good work. Check them out. Magician's Tour, you'll find them on our story and also check out our new, li new line of work, uh, slightlysmoking.com. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for having me, Jack. Every day. Keep up the good work, man. Appreciate it, bro. Peace. Peace.